Good morning, everybody. It's really nice to hear people just enjoying conversation and laughter. Nothing like being part of the family God is there. So, um, well, let's uh, go ahead and, and uh, stand on our first song to get the blood flowing. And uh, it's hard to sit down on this song. I always like to open with a praiseworthy song, and that's one that focuses on our, uh, the blessing of our faith. And heaven came down and glory filled our soul. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I've wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling. He made all my darkness depart. song. That era had a lot of bounce and brightness to it, didn't it? A little different type of music. So let's open our prayer and service, our prayer and service today. When you play and sing and focus the notes, your brain kind of gets things crossed over. And that's when you get your tongue in front of your eye teeth and you couldn't see what you're saying. I don't know. I'm so confused. Let's pray today. Lord, just thank you so much for this beautiful service we can come to today and the chance we can worship freely without fear of persecution. Thank you for the family that gives us strength because we're all focusing on the same thing, which is you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the hope we can have in the love we can feel in our lives, knowing that you promise that you will watch over us in our things and not a sparrow falls without you knowing about it. So how should we fear in our own lives? Just thank you so much for the service we have today and the people in our uh, faith today that we can lean on each other's hearts and open your word and sing your songs and be uh, leave here with a new hope in our heart that we can share with others in our lives. And you're my prayer, Lord. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. The pastor is on vacation. And so you've got the, the B team today. And so we'll see what happens there. And so I wanted to kind of tip the hand. Some might may know this, but his birthday's coming up. And I wrote it down here because I can't remember most things. And some of you might know it if you want to shout it out, if you already do. The 18th of July. So if you want to kind of surprise him, 
I hope he'll probably see the video. Maybe I can edit that out and he won't see that little tidbit there. But that's pretty good stuff. So, But you got a bulletin there and I was going to just have you just read through that for the announcements coming up. And uh, tonight we are got a different kind of service. But every four months I always like to have it where you tell me what you like to sing. And uh, two things happen. I've been playing in church for 27 years. So I probably forgot more songs than I know. But it's kind of fun to stump the pianist. And um, I, I have yet to be stumped. So there's a challenge. Come back. See if you can stump me. Because these are all pretty much memorized after this many years. And uh, the hardest part's the key signatures. But it should be a fun service tonight where we have a hymn sing. So if you want to be a part of that tonight, uh, it's kind of fun to open up the hymn book and pull out some songs. And I've actually learned a, f a few new songs over the years having these hymn sings. But it'll be a good time of worship and prayer, testimony, and just singing tonight. So uh, this should be a nice uh, time. I usually have a, a format, as you probably get by now, that I have usually like three songs sitting down. Uh, my mom is 78, and she goes, son, those song leaders, they make you stand for like a half an hour. My feet start hurting. So I, I say, okay, mom, I'll have the first three songs sitting down. But if you stand up, you sing better, and, and you have a lot more air in your lungs and get the blood flowing so that, um, you know, we can have a good time of focusing on the message. So let's go to our next song sitting down. 740 in your hymn book if you need to look it up. It's also on the bottom of the slide here. You'll see each one of them there, so I won't announce the numbers in the future. But if you see them, they're going to be on the bottom of each slide. Song 740 if you need a hymn book. And uh, we're going to start with It's Joy Unspeakable. On I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am as free as free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy Blessing, I am saved from the awful, awful sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue. out there. It's kind of nice to hear that out there. One of my uh, favorite songs in the hymn book here is 670, and it speaks to uh, that we uh, be a blessing to somebody in our lives today. Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is right.
It's kind of fun, wasn't it, to, to sing all those parts out? So, well, good singing so far, everybody. This is the part where you stand. And if you're above 80, everything hurts. Just deal with it. It just is. It's just what it is. I'm 53, and I get that way in the morning. I'm like, oh, I can't imagine 80 if this is where it's at. Wow. It's good to laugh in church, isn't it? <laughs> I love this song. He made something beautiful out of my life. You say, how could I be a witness and make a blessing out of somebody else's life? Well, share your testimony. It's not that hard. Something beautiful of my life. That's an easy thing you can share with somebody this week. Something beautiful. this week and have them say, well, what part of beautiful is in your life? And you can say, well, I can tell you right now, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our host diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows have some fun with these old hymns. So we're going to do is have this side say the question, was there a gift like the Savior given? And you guys will say, well, there's only one person that knew the answer to that? Man, I am in trouble today. Holy cow. <laughs> okay, we're going to go. Let's try this again. Was there a gift like the Savior given? Okay, I've got like six of you. Okay, we're ready to go this song. I know, I'll hope this works. You leave me hanging up here. Kind of, you know, we're, we're videoed too. This, if I fall, it's like a hundred other people see this day. So, oh, well, I got a good constitution, I guess. Okay, this side here, ask the question, you answer it. Ready? And then all together on the chorus. Was ever a gift like the Savior given? Refuse us to home in heaven. No, not one. No, not one. Never now. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's 
there's none a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. You did great. Everybody kind of jumped in there, so... And try to map the chords 
to fit the emotion of the song. And I think, wow, this third verse really fits a minor key when on the cross. When, when I think of God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin and on the th last verse I love how it lifts when you go into the major key and the inspiration in the wind. for a minute and uh it's kind of neat he's named after a president i don't know if you can fill those shoes or not <laughs> no way <laughs> jefferson okay. he was a great uh of, of one of our great presidents thomas jefferson but we're honored to have a missionary speak today come ahead if you will and uh, he's going to bring what god has placed on his heart today we're going to shut the powerpoint down because he said i want you to look at the word and let god speak to your heart and so he's going to have our ministry and message today just reading your old time Book of Faith, the Bible. Hey, good morning, everyone. That's a pleasure to be here with you today to share what God has put in my heart. And it has to come from God's word, isn't it? Because the pulpit is a place to really talk in the behalf of God using his word. That's where we want to be in God's word. Because truth comes from God, and he put that truth in reach of you and of me in a book. But here's something for you to think about. Truth with, with all the Holy Spirit is just words that maybe can be any kind of word in the world. People see the Bible as just sometimes stories, allegories. Because they don't have the Spirit of God. But for those who are also just in the realm of the Spirit without the truth, it can be just, how can I say, excitement. Oh, I'm so excited. This is motivation. This is good. I'm so energized. But sometimes there's no truth. So both have to walk together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you because we are here today, because you brought us here. Yes, you put in your hearts a desire to be in church, and I'm thankful that I was able to choose. Nobody forced me, and I said, Lord, I want to go to church today. I want to share what you put in my heart. And Lord, I pray for each one of us that 
you prepare our hearts to listen to you, not to the preacher, but what you have to say to us through your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, I, I, I like to, to, to use more, how can I say, the book that I have. And this way you can pay attention to the preacher. And it doesn't matter who preaches, but it's good to, to share what comes out of the heart. What God put in my heart uh, lately is without vision, people perish. And we need to define what's vision. Okay, there's two words that can explain at least uh, what we want to mean here. Vision and sight. So vision is what you see that could be. And sight is the things that you see as it, it is. I think in, in Michigan they have a, a, it is what it is. I have heard that so many times. And I think that's kind of a sight. It is what it is. This is what I have seen, the reality. But vision is something more, more precious. Vision is something that you need faith. You need wisdom. You need much more to have vision. I think it was Ellen Keller was a lady who wrote many songs. She was blind and deaf. And she said, they asked to her, what could happen worse? You are deaf and you are deaf and you are blind. And she said, I believe what is worse is for those who are, they have ears and they have eyes and they cannot envision what Christ did for them and for me. You see, today we're singing songs about who God is. The joy, the things that I will see when I will be in heaven. And Jesus opened your eyes to see who you were. Who you were before Christ, lost, without salvation, going to hell. But now you see, you're transformed. Now you will not perish anymore. What the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, that God loved the world in a such a way, in a wonderful way, <laughs> that he gives. He gave his son that for each person who believes in him, will have eternal life because they will not perish. See, without Christ, we were perishing. But because of Christ, we have a future. And I believe that's what I, I shared the last time I was here. If you remember, I was talking about vision. I was talking about what God wants from us. And... Um, so let's go to, to what I want to really uh, read with you. If you have your Bible, please open your Bible in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. I will read for you. Um, it's a passage that I really like. You see, I will share with you my secret now. Proverbs is my favorite book of the Bible. And let me tell you, who gave me that tip. Robert Kaminsky, he was a missionary in Brazil for many, many years, and I was in seminary, and I went to him because I love that man. I have very good experiences with that guy. He's now with the Lord. He's already passed away. But I, I, came to, I went to him and I said, Mr. Robert, uh, Bob, tell me, what would be the best book for me to read? from the Bible, because you are a Bible teacher. He said, Jefferson, here's a good book. I was 18 years old. Read every day one chapter of Proverbs, because Proverbs talks about wisdom. And if there's something that we all need, is wisdom to become wise. And I really gained a lot of, how can I say, wisdom from that book because of that tip. And I still read every day because Proverbs has 31 chapters. You can read one chapter for each day of the month. So if you skipped yesterday, today is the 11th. So you can read today the 11th. The 11th chapter of Proverbs. And there's something special there. So I love to do that. So let's read. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. 
but Hap is the uh, but Hap is he who keeps the law. Proverbs twenty nine eighteen. What a passage. It says where there's no revelation. Actually we see another word for vision. Revelation. And God's word is the revelation of God's truth in Christ for you to see that you have hope. You have life. You have truth. You have a way to walk in this earth. Let me, say, let me tell you something. Do you know who, uh, who were the guys that came up with your roads here in America? With all the plans and with the engineering I made some research because I love to drive here in America, guys. For a guy who lived in Africa, 23 years. Can you imagine driving 14 hours in one road with just one lane to go another lane in the opposite direction with the same kind of track that you face here? Who have done that before? I, I thought nobody. <laughs> Maybe some guys. That's, that's Senegal. Dangerous. See, the Mormons, they were the guys who really planned. Why? Here's what happened many, many years ago. Those who were able to buy a car, they would have to make their own roads because it would connect the farmers to the town where they would do the shopping. And this was a problem because some farmers that uh, have better conditions to keep the road, and that's why they would put the name of that farmer on the road. This is my road. And here's something. For you to come to my road, to use my road, you had to pay. Oh, really? To? That's the word? To? It started many, many years ago. <laughs> but the Mormons, because they, they were a very good community, and they figured out, they said, we have engineers, we have schools, we're going to come up with an idea. We're going to talk to our community that we will take care of these roads. We're going to make very good roads. We're going to see the future because they had vision. And that's why many good cities in America have very good roads. And what happened? They charged people to use their roads. But eventually the government saw that and said, oh, let's, let's, let's get it. So they, they bought it from them. But that's the story. Now, if you want to, just for, for you to see that it's true, go to New York City. I never went, but I heard the traffic there is terrible because there was no planning. It grew so fast, they didn't have time to really plan. And I heard from people that go, went to New York that, Jefferson, you can be there for six hours in downtown New York City because there's no lane for you to to pass. Uh, so if there's a truck that has to unload things, you have to wait there for five hours. It's the law. You need to wait. So lack of planning, a lot of jam. <laughs> so that's what they have. But that really gives us the idea that here you have two lanes to go to Grand Rapids or to go to Florida. Amazing. I drove to Florida with my whole family and I was so thankful. I said, Lord, what a blessing to drive in a road that are two lanes. And when we got in uh, Atlanta, I think, uh, Georgia, six lanes. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, it was darkness, man. Uh, I never had that experience before. I was driving like this and then I saw, like, <laughs> even my boys were with me and they was terrified. <laughs> then I saw many cars, but fast, fast. So, just share with you a little bit of my experience here in America. Now, let me tell you something. I share from the beginning. Two lanes give us just two points. First, good sense and safety. That's what two lanes give it to you, isn't it? But also gives you a vision of the future. Two lanes. That's what someone thought. If we have two lanes, we're going to have a better traffic, less accident, and people can get there faster. I like that. Something else. The motor of a car. 
needs two things in order to work, air and fuel. If air and fuel are not in the, in the exact precise measurement, it will not turn on. You know that. If you know a car, it doesn't work. And I like those examples just for you to see that we need to be in the Word, but also dependent of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Do you listen to the Holy, the Holy Spirit every day as you read the Bible? Or you read the Bible just because it's my duty? You see, God said that those who become true worshipers of God is those who know God. You see, there's no way for you to worship God if you don't know Him. And the only way for you to know Him is to have faith. Now, faith is not something that we have today. As a missionary, somebody came to me and said, Jefferson, if you want to go back to Senegal, you needed to pay on the health insurance. Well, really, when I went in 1995, I didn't need to. Ah, oh, times changed. Well, don't forget, the same God that sent you to Senegal without insurance is the same God that can send you with an insurance. And I say, but you know, there is an if. If I don't, can I go? If I don't have it? Oh, yeah, I think you need to have it first. You see, that's just one thing that's happening. My friend here works with insurance. We were talking about that. He said, Jefferson, it's all about greedy. But so let's talk something very simple that I learned about a few weeks ago here in America. My wife, she said, I want flowers in my house. This is summer. And we were going to have an open house. We, are, we, we were having an open house. They said, I want flowers. I want to do everything good. They said, yes, let's do it. So I learned it. And I learned something. In order to avoid weeds to come out, you know, in the dirt, you put mush. Who knows mush here? M mush? Is that much? Yeah, thank you. Much. How do you call that? Much. Oh, almost there, much. <laughs> I never saw that before, much, you know. And the guy said, you know, when you put much, it will make things nice. The weeds will not sprout. and actually keeps the dirt a little bit humid. You know, because it's hot, and then you didn't, you didn't need to water the plants as much. I said, wow, that's a good idea. So we got mulch after we planted all our flowers. It looks nice. Now, here's the point. And how about knowing all about this? And I said to Joanna, if we don't get mulch, I will not plant flowers. Come on, man. <laughs> no, I don't have money for mulch. No flowers? Yeah, no flowers. So now the question is, what is more important? Flowers or mulch? Flowers. Now, it's going to be harder to keep those flowers clean, but we can still do it. You see, what I'm sharing with you, there's a name for that. Pragmatism. People are pragmatic here in America, especially in developed countries. Which means, it's a good thing. You, pre you, you perceive a bad situation. And then you become proactive to be prepared for that bad situation. It is bad or it is good to be like that? It is good. It's not bad. God's not against that. Actually, the Bible says you should be prudent. But when you become prudent so much... That God is out of the picture, then faith is not there. It's your hand. And that's where I want to challenge you today. That God is still the same God. In 2018, Jefferson got very sick in Senegal. I had a gallbladder problem. In Africa, people are very poor. And let me tell you, exactly today, 11th of July, I was going to the operation room exactly today, three years ago. But besides that, today, if Gloria was alive, it would be my wedding anniversary. 
And Gloria died almost in that hospital that I was going to be operated on the 11th of July. There are so many things in my mind in that day, I thought, I'm going to die today. <laughs> I thought, really, there are so many things happening. And the doctor, he didn't put a pincher. He forgot to, how you call a clamp? Clamp my bile where the bile, the liquid that comes out, you know, and then an infection installed. And I almost died there. See, who kept me there? God. I didn't have any health insurance. When Gloria had a heart attack, she didn't have it either. And then people would say, Jefferson, how do you dare to be back in Senegal without a health insurance? That was in 2018. I said, I didn't, I, nobody said that I have to have one. They said that to the leadership after the matter. Because look at this, $76,000 was my debt towards new tribes. But new tribes covered everything. But in four months, the whole church and the whole world helped me to pay that debt. And the glory is to who? To God. God taught me faith. I talked to the leader of New Tribes. I said, look, what a testimony. Don't diminish what God does. But actually, because of that, some guys, they said, no, New Tribes use New Tribes money, and it's not supposed to be like that. Because that money belongs to the whole organization. See, that's the reality that we are facing in the field. And I want you to pray for our leaders, because they are facing big decisions. And big decisions can change your vision for the future. You see, another word I want to just put to you in this verse. What's the difference between decision and choice? It seems the same, isn't it? You decide or you choose. What is a decision? It's something that you made it. You decide and then you made it. Did you choose? Sometimes not. You didn't have the time to reflect. Because if you want to next time to make a decision, think about the choice. Why I'm choosing this? And then you decide. I want to choose to glorify God. Do you want to? It's going to be hard. When you have a choice that you put in your heart, I want to honor him. It's going to be hard. So that's something that I want you to think about. We need the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to walk with God and to do God's will. And the text that I want you today to reflect now deeper is the essence of a believer. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14 that we are the south of the world. Now, you need to understand culture. Many, many, many years ago, Jewish people didn't have bathrooms like we do today. And they would use salt for their bathroom. They would do their business and put salt on the top and then cover it with dirt. You know why? Because salt has the power to satanize, uh, to, 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 how can I say, separate the bad things, to get rid of the bad things, to clean. But at the same time, salt has the power to give manure, like fertilize, to, to give the ingredients to the dirt. Just for you to know, in Brazil we plant coconuts a lot. And guess what? They put a small bucket of, bucket of salt on the dirt, and they mix it, and then they put the coconut uh, dried, like we say dried, is a, is a nut, and then they plant it. So we need... We need salt because in some areas in Brazil, it's very dry. And what happens with the salt? The salt keeps things humid and, that's, uh, and also attracts uh, uh, water and gives more energy to the dirt. And you see, that's what happens with salt when salt is good. So they always need salt in their homes. And Jesus now using this, he said, 
Now, if the South loses its strength, seasoning to season the food, whatever, there's no way to recover that South. You have to throw away. And you are South. Now, let me tell you how South, South loses its efficiency. You know what, how? When it's mixed with other things. When it's adulterated, like it's compromised. Let me tell you, how do you mess with your mind when you are in Christ? How? You don't lose your salvation. I know you have Christ. And once you were bought by the blood of Christ, you belong to him. But you can lose your efficiency if you allow the world thinking to come to your mind. It's not what the world is trying to do all the time. Hey, we have a better way. Here's the way we can do this. Oh, here are the ideas. That's all about humanism. Humanism is so powerful today in many ways because what they come to you they say you can you have strength within with inside of you you can just do it you're gonna make it happen that's what I hear all in this media today you have the power to change your life no you don't Yes, human being has a lot of uh, pot potential, but they don't have life. You know, about two days ago, Dyke's wife buried. She died about two weeks ago. She had a heart attack. They tried to really do what they could, but she died. And she is now with Christ, living forever with her. And that's the consolation. But let me tell you, when we went there on, on, on Friday, everybody looked good. No, there's no place that is more cleaner than a funeral, isn't it? Every, every person comes with a very nice manner, very quiet. You know, and everybody wants to show respect. But let me tell you, the only thing we see there is a dead body. Sometimes that's the way it looks like the world. They have a very good manner. They say good things to each other, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. And the question I have to you today, are you going to choose to share the vision that you have in Christ, the future that he gave to you to others? We want to see you growing in Christ. You need to be the salt. The salt, in order not to lose its strength, healthiness, it has to keep pure with God's word and independence with the Holy Spirit. So that's what God's put in my heart this morning. And just to, to finish. Beatitudes, they are dividing two, um, in two parts. The first part is very small, actually. The Beatitudes is talking about happy is person. Happy is this person. Okay, the characteristics of a believer. And I would challenge you to think about that. The beginning of a life with Christ this blessed are you who is poor in the spirit because the kingdom of God you see that's the, the only way for a person to become part of God's kingdom being poor in spirit Lord I need you I don't, I don't have anything to offer to you my wisdom is nothing I'm lost you see, that's the way it begins. The second thing, it says, 
Blessed are you who cry. Because you will be comforted. You see, it's kind of this. The first, the first thing you, you felt very sad. You said, I don't have anything to offer. And then you cry. And then you feel hopeless. And then he comes and he calls. Have you experienced God's comfort today? If you did, it's because you said, Lord, in this manner, I can't. And let me tell you, repentance is very important. Because repentance means I change my mind from wrong to right. That's repentance. It's not just say, I'm sorry. You can say sorry many, many times, but if you don't change, it's just a feeling, but not an action. The third thing that I want to encourage you now, after being comforted, he said, bless you, the meek. Now you become meek. You see, the meek person is just the one that experienced God's comfort. That's the real meek guy. Not the guy who has money, wisdom. Is the guy who knows God, how well and deeply he was forgiven. And I will finish there because next time we're going to continue. And here, where I want to this morning, I, I I woke up today four o'clock, four thirty in the morning, just to pray. My message has been in my heart for a long time, but today I said, Lord, I want to ask you something. I said to the Lord today as I was getting ready for my my message today. I said, Lord, why did Jesus never sin? I'm not satisfied just the fact that he's God. I'm not just satisfied uh, satisfied or (laughs) that he is the one that came and had this virgin uh, birth. I want to know more about Jesus. It was so cool this morning as I was praying and the Lord said it to me. You know why he never sinned? Because we are humble. It that made me cry. God is humble. You see, when you are humble, you don't sin. Be humble in Christ. He will never sin. Jesus never sinned because he was humble. He was not full of pride. Never. A lesson to my heart to be humble. It's hard, isn't it, for us because we are full of pride. We are. I am. I am full of pride. You see, if I finish this preaching and if someone comes to me, there's a good job. And, oh, yes, I did really good. All the work I did. Went away <laughs> because I I think I'm something when I'm nobody. That's the hardest thing for all of us to walk in the humbleness of Christ. The only way to do that is to crucify my I in the cross every day. Every day, it's not just one day. It's every day you have to say, Lord, I need you. My flesh, there's nothing. The only, <laughs> the only way for my flesh to work is when it's dead. <laughs> because anything you do in the flesh, no value. But in God, yeah, everything is perfect. Okay? And I will leave with you a passage that I really love. Okay? Uh, uh, what I like about internet is that you can just go like that. And I want you to open the Bible in First Corinthians. Chapter 15. And verse 58. Okay. 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, 
be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's what I leave with you. Be humble. Because everything that you do in Christ will not be wasted, but be movable, at fast. Be with him, because the fight is big. So I hope that was an encouragement to you. God bless you. Thanks so much. 504. Thank you so much for the privilege of your word, that we have the chance to have the full written word and the vision that we can have in our lives. Lord, just sometimes I'm challenged with the fact that we have all this information at our fingertips through our simple phone, and yet we spend so little time in your word. And uh, just thank you so much for the privilege we have, and I know there's a humbling with the message today about the accountability I'm going to have in heaven of how much I really focused on you. Lord, this is the second uh, word that came to my heart um, that as he was speaking was, I am the vine and you're the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Lord, just help me to understand the resolve I need in my life to focus on you and realize that you're the only strength and hope I have to manifest anything for your kingdom in this world. Just help me not to trust in the flesh today, but lean heavily into your Holy Spirit. Help me not to trust in my flesh that's corrupt, but see through the eyes of your understanding so I can see the truth about what your word says is true in the world. And just grieve my heart today so that I can find who's my community, who are the people in my life that I'm the only one that they're going to see to find their way to you, Lord. Just help me to find somebody in my life this week and give me the courage to say, let me tell you about a friend I know. Let me about tell you about the most important person in my life, and I want to introduce you to that. It doesn't take much, and I'm ashamed that I don't do it enough either, Lord. Just thank you for your chance to come into the house today and the chance we have a chance to come into worship with each other and lean on each other's hearts. There's nothing like the family and the community of Christ, and just thank you for the privilege we have today of that. Just help us all to leave today enriched by your word, filled with your promise that we go out and just share that with somebody this week who's hurting 
and in need of that hope. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen.